Hi all, really sorry that I can't be with you today, but it's good to be able to at least join you in this virtual manner. My name is Carl Smethurst and I am one of the regional ministers from the South West Baptist Association. My particular responsibility is for all things mission. And I'm praying that today, as we open God's word and consider what it might mean for us in our churches, that we might hear his voice and respond to it as we join in the mission of God in our locality. As someone whose role it is to encourage our churches and pioneers and chaplains in the mission of God in the South West, I'm often asked to go and talk at churches to explain what the mission of God is. Well, of course, what it looks like is different depending on each context, but there are certain things, elements, that I think are common to God's mission across the board. There's a whole series of sermons about that one. But today I think it would be good for us to concentrate on just one. I believe that God calls you and I, his church, to be his agents of blessing to this world. I don't think that's something new, but that's been the case for the mission of God for all time. And when I say blessing, I don't just mean just doing nice things for others, although I hope that maybe you do that as well. I believe that God's blessing through his church is a powerful spiritual activity that brings spiritual change in the world around us. We're going to take a look at a couple of different passages of scripture today. The first I would like to read to you is from the first letter that Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18. These verses from towards the end of that letter. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Each of those statements is at least one sermon in its own right. We haven't got time for that today, but I'd like us to focus on just the verse 18, which says, give thanks in all circumstances. My guess is that that phrase has adorned a thousand fridge magnets on the fridges of Christians the world over, being on car stickers and printed on rainbow guitar straps back in the day. It sounds great, but it's not just a platitude. It's something which I think, if exercised, is utterly life-changing for each of us as disciples of Jesus and potentially life-changing for the world around us too. The truth of it is, though, that that's very difficult. Give thanks in all circumstances means not just in the good times, it means that when things are difficult, we still give thanks. Over these last weeks of being in lockdown, it has been incredibly hard for most people for all kinds of different reasons. Some have known loneliness in these last weeks like they've never known before. Others have lost loved ones and today are watching this with a sense of bereavement. Others have known illness themselves, either through this dreadful virus or through other illnesses over these last weeks ahead. Still others have known the loss of jobs, relationship breakdowns. Life can throw all kinds of things our way, sometimes in the most unexpected of manners. Giving thanks in those circumstances is incredibly difficult. A few years ago, when I was pastor of a local church in West Somerset, we decided that we would spend a year doing an exercise that was called 365 Grateful. Some of you may have seen this project, and if not, you can look it up online. It was started quite a few years ago now by a young woman in her 20s who struggled with depression and in that mental illness sought help from medical professionals and also from others. At the end of one particularly dark episode of depression, she decided to seek the advice of a nun 
I'm impressed that people in the world still do that today. And to be honest, most advice that I've had from priests, nuns and, and monks has been spot on. This particular nun said to her that she needed to practice gratitude in her life. To do that in ways that were suitable for her. Well, this young woman was a creative artist and a photographer. And so she began to take pictures, Polaroid pictures, of things around her that she was grateful for every single day. She took pictures of her lawn, not spectacularly you might think, but she began to notice that the greens of the grass in her lawn were all different. She'd never noticed that before until her eyes were open to look around her for things she was grateful for. She took pictures of the clouds in the sky, the shapes of them. It seems simple enough, but over time she built up a whole album of things that she was grateful for. Some days she was so ill that she couldn't find anything that she was grateful for. Sometimes each of us will be in that place as well. On those days, she sometimes chose to look back at things that she had been grateful for previously. Over time, she says, it began to change her outlook on life. I don't know whether she is someone who has come to faith or practices any religious practice, but what I know is that when we are practicing gratitude and thankfulness, when we are recognizing the blessings of God in our lives, then our perspective on life begins to change. Maybe today we ought to be those that even in the darkest of times, even though most of us have been through difficulties in these last months, should commit ourselves to being thankful in all circumstances, to having the attitude of gratitude, whereby we recognise the blessings of God in our lives. This is hardly a new idea, is it? I mean, it's clearly in scripture and most of us have sung as we've been growing up, if we've grown up in the church, the old song, Count Your Blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you. That's right, you know the rest. This is something which is a great song, difficult to put into practice, but something that I think that we all can and should do. Of course, God doesn't just bless us so that we keep that blessing to ourselves. I believe that he calls us as his people to be agents of blessing, channels of his blessing to those around us in the world. That this is something that he's sown into the core of what it means to be part of his family. Let me read these words to you from Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 as God establishes his people for the very first time. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people and your father's household to a land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and those who curse you I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. We are now all part of God's family, called to be part of his kingdom, part of his mission in this world. These words from Genesis 12 are repeated throughout the whole of scripture. God's people called by him to be his tools for blessing the nations of the world. My fear is, is that we do that in a way that's almost a, a platitude, to be nice, people and do nice things for those around us. Nothing wrong with that, but blessing in Jesus' name is hugely spiritually powerful. Let me read to you some words from Numbers chapter 6, maybe the most famous blessing in the whole of Scripture. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favour and give you his peace. That's normally where we stop reading that particular passage, but there's a key verse that follows. Let me read verse 27 to you. 
when Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, the Lord says to Moses, I myself will bless them. This is those who have the priestly duty in the nation being those who are being used by God as a blessing to others. God blesses others as these folks, the, the priests, are a blessing to his people. I believe that that's the same today. Who might God be calling you to bless today? It's easy, of course, to bless those who we know are close to us, to, to be a, a blessing to those who are, are blessed themselves. Maybe might I suggest you open your heart to God today to allow him to speak to you about those people whom he wants to bless through you. And maybe some of those people aren't just those who are your friends, possibly even some of those who are not nice to you, who you're not close to. We're told in 1 Peter 3 that even those who throw insults at us, that we're not to retaliate with evil, instead we should pay those folks back with a blessing. Who's God challenging you to bless in his name today? I like always to finish a sermon with a challenge. And so here's a challenge to you and to I for these weeks ahead. My challenge is that in these weeks ahead, we ask God to reveal to us the, the names of three people, three people who he wants to bless through us. And then once we've got those names, to ask God, how can I be a blessing to those people in your name, Jesus? And here's the real challenge that at least two of those three every single week are not people from your church family or people of faith, but those who need to know the love of God, who absolutely need to know the compassion of Jesus Christ. How might God use you in his mission to bless others in his name? Be ready to have a word as well as a blessing for those that ask, why are you doing this? Thank you so much, but what is this about? In these days particularly, this world needs to know the blessing of God. And the power of God's blessing is something that I believe the church is waking up to. Just a few weeks back, we had this powerful song, The Blessing, that recordings in different nations went around the globe. The Christian church praying that priestly blessing over the nations of the world. I believe that God is at work in this world today. He will use you and I in the very local places that he calls us to be his ministers of the gospel. But let's use this important tool of blessing to see the kingdom of God come and to see his will done in your life, in mine, in your street, in mine, in your town, in mine in this country, in this world. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that this day we are willing to be those people who you use to be a blessing to all nations of this world. Lord, may we bless in your name and in doing so, may your blessing be released across this planet. May people turn to you. May they recognise that you are the God of goodness. You are the God in whom we will find life, true life, in all of its fullness. And may we be those who pray blessing over all people at all times. Let's pray the words of this blessing together. <clears throat> 